Hello and welcome back to the Beefy Tech channel. Christmas has come early at the Beefy Tech headquarters, which is the room next to my bedroom, but Christmas has come early because not only am I actually doing some little festivities like wearing this headband to entertain you guys, but I got a 14900K system with an Apex V2 Encore and DDR5-8200. And yes, you might be wondering, why would you do that if you have a 7950X3D and a 7800X3D already available? I'm not sponsored. I just wanted to get a 14900K system to have the best of both worlds in terms of best of AMD, best of Intel. And not only that, my girlfriend also does video editing, video rendering, and a lot of other stuff that requires a lot more core. So I thought I was going to give her the 7950X3D, which will leave me with the 14900K system for video editing, but also for gaming. And you might be saying, but then why not buy a 13900K? And it's because the 14900K just overclocks better. Yeah, it's not gonna be like, you know, end all be all differences, but might as well get the latest and greatest as it helps the YouTube channel. Let's go over the build and the performance it has in games. Right before I show you gaming results, I do very, very quickly wanna go over my BIOS settings and how I got to the performance numbers I got to. So, what's very important for me to mention is that my performance score ratio and my RAM is quite overclocked. Here, I will not be using the 60 that you're seeing here, which is 6 GHz with hyperthreading disabled. I'll be using 58 with hyperthreading enabled. So the reason I decided to do this, instead of using the 6 GHz hyperthreading off, is because the 58 hyperthreading on, I can 100% guarantee that most of you, the general user, can achieve. Meanwhile, meanwhile 6 GHz with hyperthreading off is something that not everybody will be able to want cool down properly and to simply have the silicon lottery to hit. So I wanted to make this more representative for you guys, but all I did was use my exact settings for stable 6 GHz with hyperthreading off. I went 5.8, hyperthreading on, and kept the exact same voltages. So the voltages you're seeing are really meant for 6 GHz hyperthreading on. All of these are available. I'm going to show you all of my settings. I'm not here to hide any of the settings, but just one thing to keep in mind. These settings are not final. These settings don't apply one-to-one -to, -one to your system. For example, at 5.8, hyperthreading on, all of the e-cores on, I couldn't do 50 on the cache ratio. I had to go down to 48 to avoid CPU errors. But if you disable some of the e-cores, all of the e-cores or do hyperthreading off, you'll more often than not be able to push the cache ratio to 50. Another very important thing here is that, as you can see, I'm running all of the efficient cores, not disabling any of them. I've got virtualization disabled and hyperthreading enabled. So all of the scores you're going to be seeing are 5.8 gigahertz all core, 6.1 single core with 1.4 something volts, depends on the type of task it's doing. Now, the DDR5 is DDR5 8232 gigabytes at CL3648 4848. I'll show you the exact timings now, my bad, I went too high. The timings are not good. Just off rip, I can tell you they're okay, but they're not the absolute tightest timings that you can do on this kit. Why? I've been too lazy to be able to bother to max this out. I will do it, and I'll do another video with the complete maxed out 6 GHz hyperthreading disabled with the absolute best timings at DDR5-8200, but for now, this is what I have available to show you guys. So I'm just gonna scroll all the way down. I didn't even mess with the tertiary timings or any of that stuff. And uh, yeah, this is about it. Uh, if you want to see any other settings, please let me know in the comments section. The fans on this system are always at 100%. This CPU is really hard to cool and with this type of overclocking you kind of need it. Otherwise there's nothing really special done to it. Uh, one important thing to mention is that I do have a lot of these settings like the AVX ratio changed. I also have load line calibration 7. I've also got the maximum CPU core temperature set to 100 degrees which it by default it normally is. And I've got, let me see, the IA slash DC load line at 1.2. Very important as this heavily affects the VRM core voltage and the core voltages. And the VF point offsets are set to negative 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, and 0 0.01 on points 8 through 11. Now, yes, uh, it is quite a bit. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, it's okay. But I wanted to leave this here at the start of the video so you guys can see full transparency. I will be doing a more in-depth guide about how you guys can achieve this sort of overclock and BIOS settings too, but for now, I just thought I'd show you. 
in the first game we'll be taking a look at today is Warzone Urzikstan. The reason I like to take a look at this game is because it's one of the most intensive and I played the most. A lot of YouTubers like to test this game while looking on the outskirts of the map, which I'm doing right now. Yes, you get a lot more FPS if you look on the outskirts of the map, but who cares? That's not where you're going to be doing your gunfights. You want to be pointing inwards of the map, and that's exactly the way we're going to be pointing the entire test today. As you can see, when we begin these tests, the FPS still remains reasonable, but it does dip down a lot versus looking on the outskirts of the map. I've actually got some very interesting behavior I wanted to talk about because I've already done the test and I've seen it, but let's get to that po point first. As you can see, the 307 to 308 average FPS is really good for this section of the map. With 230 in the lows, you're a happy chap. You have no issues with the CPU. On the AMD side, if I remember correctly, the averages were slightly higher or the same, but the 1% lows were lower. So yes, there you go. Intel system does indeed consistently get better 1% lows than my own 7800X3D. Mind you, other 7950X3D systems or 7800X3D systems might perform better than mine. But one important thing is that this system, just like the AMD one, sees the 280s for a short amount of time while passing in this area with a resizable bar turned off, which is completely normal behavior for, th for this area of the map. It's identical to the AMD side. I will also be testing to see if the mouse actually affects your FPS in any way, shape or form and how movement affects your FPS. First things first, we're going to be testing the mouse. So I'm going to restart the 1% lows specifically so you can see live fresh 1% lows, what difference moving your mouse makes. And as you can see, the FPS is actually going up while moving your mouse. So yes, aiming is not affected at all on Warzone with a 4900K. But what is affected is moving forward, which is very interesting. Because what you may notice is that in correlation with me stopping, the FPS goes slightly higher. And in correlation with me starting to move forward, the FPS tends to dip a little bit. It's not a big dip or anything. It's just that it goes down by about 5 to 10 FPS every single time I start moving, which is some very interesting behavior coming from this game. Up next, we've got the finals, but uh, I wanted to say I might have made a slight mistake and played with RTX Global Illumination on Epic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, at first I was going to say that I'm not particularly impressed with the results because my 7800X 3D performs better. Uh, so I played an entire game, I recorded the entire session without realizing that I had full-blown epic ray tracing on the entire time. So the results you're seeing right now where I'm not fully GPU bound at 1440p are indeed because ray tracing heavily affects CPU performance. But look, we'll look at this as a yes, it can take even a very intensive game like the finals with ray tracing at ultra. Despite the graphic settings being low, ray tracing ultra probably hits it really hard. And these averages for ray tracing being at ultra are still extremely, extremely solid. And not only that, this game did not stutter once. I wanted to do one single recording session and I ended up playing three full games and I was on the game for over an hour just because I enjoyed it so freaking much. But look, I want to take a quick look at this game, put it in here because it's new and let you guys know that yes, the game is fully smooth, even with my dumbass turning RTX <laughs> ray tracing on. So yeah. If you do want to play this game, you'll definitely have an amazing time on this CPU. Not only that, but if you play with RTX ray tracing off, it will get like 30 to 40 more FPS on the minimum. So yeah, make sure you do that. Now, the very next game that I've wanted to test is PUBG. And the reason I choose this game time and time again is because it has huge performance issues. I use DX11 with roughly a mix of ultra, medium and low settings to test the game and see how it performs. Now. Here the game still looks extremely plausible given it has a lot of ultra settings and I chose this part of the town because it's a huge ass city and I thought you know what maybe if I look towards the city there's performance issues here and while you do see the occasional tiny tiny micro stutter coming from this game it's nothing that is going to make your gameplay completely unplayable and horrible on the 14900k system. What's weird is that once I walked out of the city I actually had way lower FPS which I think it has to do with the view distance, or at least I thought it had to do with the view distance, but basically looking outwards of the city was massively hurting the FPS, which just goes to show how unoptimized PUBG is. 230 FPS looking in the middle of nowhere at absolutely nothing intensive, and we were getting over 330 looking dead center in the city. Looking off the side of the map, it was 370. Looking at the city, we're back to 350, 360. Looking at the floor, it's 400. So, okay. 
uh, my point is that this game is not well optimized, no matter what system you have. It performs really well, and I even attempted to turn the settings to low to maybe just maybe see if uh, that was part of the problem. But before I did that, I wanted to test the 1% lows. And you can see the 1% lows are reasonable, plus or minus when a micro stutter happens. And you'll see it happen because this is PUBG. It's just bound, you know, part of the game. No matter if you have a 7950X3D, 7800X3D, or 14900 k those micro stutters happen because of the game's optimization. Uh, as you can see here, though, we're getting about 300-something averages with 200 and lows, which is really, really solid for the mix of ultra and low settings. Now, yeah, if you were to play competitive, you wouldn't just set everything to low on this game, because then you won't be able to see absolutely anything. What you will do is just simply do a mix and match of both, but... I just went full-blown very low settings out of curiosity to see if maybe just maybe that dip in the 220s when we're looking this specific way goes away when we apply really low settings. And all it does is it takes our quote-unquote dip from 220 to 250 in that area. And it takes the rest of the FPS pretty much not much higher because the settings are CPU bound. Yeah. This game's not very well optimized, but it does run well enough to where on this system you would not have an issue playing, quite frankly. <laughs> this next game you guys might not know, but it's called Phasmophobia. For the ones that do, you may know that Maple Lodge, even the redesigned version of it, because yes, we are playing on a redesigned brand new map, is actually extremely CPU intensive. And in fact, they had to redo this entire map because the old gen PS4 consoles and Xbox could not run it properly. So. To meet that minimum requirement on consoles, they redid the whole map, and yet it's still one of the most demanding maps they have. You'll notice that the 1% lows are struggling, even on the 4900K plus DDR5 8200. This map just has a lot of issues with performance, and a lot of the bigger maps on this game do, which is why I decided to use it for the testing. The GPU usage is sitting at 40% on the 4090, so that alone should go to show that even with a system like this, you may encounter weird performance gimmicks on some games. This is a Unity game engine, and Unity is a bit finicky with the CPU performance. Regardless though, on my end, it was mostly smooth while I was playing, and trust me, it's no better on AMD. This happens regardless of system, basically. But the performance in the averages is splendid, especially for this map. And I know I've been hitting you with some real curveballs for testing, but the next game we're looking at is No Man's Sky. Yes, believe it or not, this is one of the stutteriest, most messy CPU-bound games I've played to date. And the reason I like to keep testing it is specifically because it brings high-end systems to its knees. What you'll notice is that we're sitting around that 200 average FPS with about 70-80% to 80 GPU usage, but the 1% lows are holding on for dear life. And not only that, the more you move around, the more you'll notice that the game is not particularly well optimized. Well, mind you, given it's a procedurally generated game that loads entire planets, I can mostly forgive it, but during a thunderstorm, where a lot is happening, it's putting the 4090 and 4900k to their knees. And this game on the AMD system was a stuttery mess, and on the 4900k system it's stuttery when you first load, but then the stutters go away the more you play. So basically, no matter what system you're on, yet again, the game is a bit unoptimized, but it's not terrible. I would actually say that on the 4900k system, this was a much smoother experience overall, especially after that first like 30 seconds where the entire planet loads. So I'm satisfied with what I'm seeing, and the averages are quite frankly reasonable. If I remember correctly, I used to play with not ultra settings on the AMD system, and I'd see pretty much the same or better FPS in terms of averages, but in the 1% lows, yet again, the systems are holding equal, or this one's pulling a little bit ahead of the AMD side. So in my books, that is very, very solid performance for a game that is, by design, insanely intensive on the CPU. But look, I'm aware I've been hitting this system with some of the most CPU-bound unoptimized games that there currently are on the market, specifically just to see how it holds up, and it pretty much is on par, slightly worse or slightly better than the 7800X3D and 7950X3D systems that I have, and it's very, very consistent, so I'm overall very satisfied with it. 
You may indeed notice that the performance on Vondel Resurgence is absolutely stunning. I'm very satisfied with that. And in fact, it feels beautifully smooth. So much so, instead of testing, I just began playing the game to feel it out for myself and give you guys a final opinion on how smooth I think the experience is versus AMD, because I think most people want to hear, is there actually a huge difference between the best of the best Intel and the best of the best on AMD in terms of outright smoothness, because there's the whole 1% load debate. And let me tell you with complete honesty what I think. The 7950X 3D system and the 7800X 3D system perform incredibly well in Warzone. Truthfully though, while they perform well, I actually do think I can noticeably tell my system being slightly smoother with a 14900K. And mind you, it's really slight, so AMD fanboys don't go at me. It's a small ass difference, like you really have to be looking for it to find it, but I think this system is slightly smoother under heavy motion. And I want to come back to that thing of, when I was shaking the mouse furiously, my FPS wasn't really going down, my 1% lows weren't being affected, it was me moving around that was actually affecting the FPS. And on AMD, from my testing, moving the mouse does actually hurt the FPS by a small amount. Yes, it does not make that big of a difference in the end, at the end of the day, because you can still aim and see perfectly on both systems, but I do actually feel the difference. I do. I'm sorry, it's just what it is. It's my honest opinion. Maybe I'm just a dumbass and I can, I, you know, I'm making things up, maybe it's placebo, but the 14900K system feels slightly smoother, and that's my honest take on the whole situation. I'm able to track perfectly smooth, the game feels awesome, and I have nothing bad to say about this system other than the power draw being insane. Mind you, that's also my fault because I have the voltages and everything set for 6 GHz and I was using it at 5.8, so it was drawing a crazy amount of power, but still. If you want to run the system at absolute maximum performance, you're going to be seeing above 200 watts in-game fairly consistently. And that's quite crazy when you compare to AMD, which gets 60 to 90 watts at most. But look, I'm not saying AMD stutters, that's the whole thing. AMD does not stutter, it's still an extremely smooth experience. My point is that AMD is actually an awesome platform to be on because it uses way less power, it's a hundred times easier to cool and overclock, and it's way cheaper. If you want to reach the performance levels you're seeing here, you need an Apex Encore, you need DDR5-8200, and you need to win the CPU lottery to be able to get that RAM speed going, so on top of money, you need luck. Basically, it's not a guarantee unless you overpay somebody to do it for you, which sadly happens a lot in this scene. On AMD, go buy the most generic parts known to mankind and you're getting 99.9% .9 of the smoothness of this system. So, AMD has its perks, but so does Intel. If you want to dish out every single goddamn pen you have on a system, and you're on the smoothest experience, there is a definite purpose to the 14900K, but you're going to be paying double of what you're going to be paying for the AMD system, and it's just simply how it is. Anyway, I will actually be going in-depth of how to overclock the system and get it to perform how you're seeing it in the video. It's very important to get this information out because I love putting people out of business that charge money for things that should be free. So stay tuned, guys, and subscribe because I will indeed be giving all my settings and overclocking techniques for free and showing you exactly how to achieve them too. Also, do enjoy how absolutely terrible the Warzone servers are right now. Yes, the deeper we go into this video you're gonna see, I begin to lag more and more because of the server and eventually it disconnects me. But anyway, this is not the point. This system's awesome. I enjoy it a lot and I'm gonna make a lot more content on it coming forward because it is very entertaining to overclock and very entertaining to just show you guys how to overclock it too. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it was helpful. Have a good one and peace.